Hi, this is Wanna Work Cam here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at one of my all-time favourite street light fittings. This is none other than an AJ Ferguson Zodiac, 2x20 white fluorescent. And this one's got some really cool stuff inside. Well, let's go and have a look. So, these, um, small street lights of this style, started to be produced around about the late 1960s and into the 1970s and then the early 80s is when mercury vapor kind of took over from these so yeah so here we got the spot where the, the pole would go in it's actually missing a little plastic thing that goes inside there to help seal the gap. If you're missing, you can still see the screw there from where it goes in. Top, and up here, I'll put it up. See, there's where the arm goes in. And this here, these are actually two holes that are actually plugged up with aluminium in this casting. One of them, the one here, this one's in the middle, that's normally for a, a top entry, so it could be mounted onto one of the old one eight cast iron street light arms that had the incandescence on them and then the one next to it would have been for a photo cell um i do have another zodiac that's got those two features on it except that's actually mounted on my setup and i can't be bothered to take it down just to do a video <laughs> so yeah that's what those little bumps are and this side's pretty much the same there was a little bit of tape there because when I first got the cast aluminium top top piece on, it was bent and I was silly and tried to unbend it, despite the fact I knew that cast aluminium shatters like glass when you bend it. And that happened, but have, I have that tape on there, it's barely even noticeable. So, on the bottom of the diffuser, it says AJ Ferguson Zodiac. So to get into the fixture, on either end, you have little, you got these two little thumb screws. Just loosen them. Yeah, that opens. This side's got a retained part on it. Although if you do push it up, as you can see, the fuse comes right off. This one's a little bit yellowed from UV exposure. That just adds to the character. <sighs> and now we're inside. To this is that's how you get into do replace the tubes. If you want to get into replace the valves to the starter, uh, what you do is push it back in this. Um, so down in here, you got this little latch thing you push it out and then normally the gravity and normally when you're up on the pole the gravity will help to bring this down and there that's what's inside it's got the electrical piece and then the cast aluminium top with the rubber seal in it you can see where those plugged up holes are is where the screws normally would be for you mounting for mounting it on the pole this one I had to take them out because the holes need to be re-tapped and um, they don't go in enough and this fixture is really cool there was water pooled in it at some point you can see all the rust but despite all that this thing still works fine <sighs> tubes that we got let's turn this up here got these two canadian sylvania f20 t12 warm white and the date code which is the dash and dots just between the line and the warm white and the sylvania text that's that's the um that's a date code and it's 
shows either 1965 or 1975. I'm willing to bet 1975 because the, the Zodiac didn't exist in 1965. Here we've got the starters. These are actually original to the fixture. Let's <laughs> turn that around. Phillips P2, made in Australia. Very old. Bakelite starter receptacle sockets. Mm. Also original. And then, right here, got the big chunky brick ballast. This is a Sultra branded one. Other brands were also used in these. The other one I have has a ballast that's labeled as CMP controls. This one's a Sultra. A-double-L-K-2-X-20-slash-1-T-T. And you see, there's a few spots and some rust and stuff on it, and the little connector things have been, had their fair share of weather exposure, but it still works. And it's pretty much silent. The other thing I'm glad about is that these lamp holders here are still good. Because finding replacements of these those lamp holders, which is these little plastic things in there, um, they're getting harder to find and they're also very, very expensive. So that's why I like to keep them original if I, wherever I can because of how expensive it is to replace them. Yeah, so, and yeah, all the wiring except for the grey cable coming in and the a little bit of pink wire and whatnot, and that terminal lock. All the wiring, it's still original, and it's actually, if you look here, it's upside down, it says Sultra on it. And then it's just got a whole bunch of other stuff there. It's probably just all the technical parameters, like the safe operating temperature and voltage and all of that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is, uh, it's got two tubes stacked. Is this end, this, this one's not covered in rust. This end is. These tubes are also original. So pretty much everything in here is original. It's really, really cool. Just goes to show how well built these things are. Those old ballasts like that, they're pretty much impossible to kill. I've never had one go bad. Mm. And despite all that rust, that still works too. And you actually see it in a moment. <clears throat> Let's put this back up here. So to put the light back together, what you do is, well, normally when you run a pole, you'd be able to just hook that there and then this side, you just push it in. And just do that and then do you take the diffuser, remember which end's got the retaining end on it. The way I remember is the end with the AJ Ferguson stamp on it is actually the end with the retain clip. When you put it back on you might need to loosen it as a little thumb screw things. And then, when that's done, just tighten it back up. <clears throat> Whoops. <laughs> Don't worry. These things are built like tanks. I dropped one from about a metre high and it survived fine. how well built these are. It's also the reason why they're one of my favorite fixtures. So what we'll do, we'll flip it over so that the cable is over the other side and you can kind of see the, the markings on my tube. And I'll move this over. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug it in, which of course is gonna fall because the, the ballast 
Why is it turned? Maybe. And I put it against the wall. Or something. So yeah, we'll plug it in and watch it light up. There, it's lit up. In person, it's a very nice warm light. Mm -hmm. And on the camera, it appears a sort of a funny washed out greenish yellow. Mm -hmm. Still, very nice. And it's working. It's working. The bell's silent. Mm -hmm. The noise you hear is actually just the. The noise you might be able to hear in the background is actually just an exhaust fan that's. Underneath the floor, this is the second, because I'm on the top level of my house. And there's a couple of exhaust fans in the floor. So, sorry about that noise. So, what I'll do now is I'll turn it off and I'll do another start. That one had some very awesome preheat action, particularly on the bottom tube. Now I'm, I'm not going to do it too much because I'm trying to preserve and lengthen the life of these two tubes as much as I can. In a few years they're going to approach 50 years old, they'll still be working and who knows how much longer they'll go for. The ends aren't even that blackened. unplug that so that's my AJ Ferguson's Zodiac street light one of my all-time favorites <laughs>